Minting NFTs usually requires a, a website that you might use like NFT Maker Pro or CNFT.io. You can go through one of those websites and mint an NFT and it usually connects directly to the Cardano node and runs a little bit of scripts and you send a bit of ADA, you get some ADA back and you also get your NFT. That's been the standard. It's been the standard since about March, late March, and the Cardano community has embraced that and NFTs have absolutely thrived without smart contracts. But now that we have smart contracts available on the Cardano blockchain, things are changing. Now, I have this interview here with Long from Carter Hub, and they've gone down the approach of actually minting the NFTs directly via smart contract at the lowest fee lowest fee possible and that is absolutely amazing so what happens here is that you actually interact on the website with a smart contract using your smart wallet such as nami or your roy and you'll be able to get into there mint your nft for 0.4 ada have that minted and trans transacted back to you directly straight away into your wallet there's no moving of ada back and forth none of this clunkiness that you might see in regards to how it's done now and it's a little bit more of an optimized way of doing it it's interesting it's cool i like it i had to play around with it if you are interested in learning more please check out our video tutorial video in the top right hand corner there otherwise like subscribe do all that stuff and let's get into this interview with long yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that you've been listening to the learn cardano podcast gotta get so long um can you tell me and tell the audience a little bit about your background and you know how you got into crypto space and how you eventually found cardano absolutely so like you know my name is long i am the founder of cardahub.io platform um, actually this is the first time that i am publicly representing and speaking about the platform about my background i have about 10 years of experience in software application development for small scale small scale to relatively large system uh, along with that i have a phd in distributed uh, distributed system my contribution to system research focus on designing, implementing, evaluating scalable, strong, consistent uh, system, in particular in the context of state machine, which essentially in the core of many system, including blockchain. But my actual experience in blockchain started in 2016, when I was looking for some inspiration for my PhD research. I built up a personal project where I tried to experience the, the blockchain and to understand it. Then I got users for that project, for that product. And the number of users increased gradually to a couple of thousands of users within a few months. Then I decided I could spend more time on the project, forming a team to grow the product. And it's the, the product itself is like a stacking pool for different blockchains that support masternode technology. So at that time, there was nothing like ded dedicated stacking. There was only stacking and masternode stacking. So after two years, that, that platform is supported like more than 150, uh, 100, 150 blockchains. Uh, we ran about 2,000 masternode concurrently on a cluster of 600 nodes across Europe we have a data center in Paris, in Amsterdam and Frankfurt. And after two years, in the beginning of 2020, the product was acquired by a Denmark FinTech team. So now they are taking care of the, the product. About Cardano, the story of mine is, I think it's just like the other, the other early adapters of Cardano. I bought my first ADA in uh, middle of 2017 and I, I still keep it until now <laughs> uh, but I, I, I was not really into the project I just bought it and I forgot it especially when there was a time that the, the prices go down significantly so I didn't really pay attention on the project uh, until the last year the middle of the last year when Cardano they announced their incentive testnet program 
So I started looking into that again. And me and my friend, we built um, the first stacking pool on the in incentive test net and then bring it to the main net and still keep it running until now. And during that time, I spent quite a lot of time looking into the development of the block of the Cardano project. And I think, okay, it's, it, it, it looks interesting and I could get ready to be back into the game. So here I am. And here you are. All right. What was that um, product that uh, you built and were, uh, was acquired? What was it called? Uh, this, is, this is called Synode, S-N-O-D-E. So that Synode, platform yeah. is support, yeah, it, it supports users who want to run their own masternode, but they don't have enough capital to run it. So they can get together and they can join together to have enough capital to run a full master node and then they can share the profit. So my pool is like a centralized place where user can come and share and join and share the profit for running master node. Very cool. I, I, I yeah. um, haven't heard of that. So I'm, I'll look it up after and uh, reference it in the show notes. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, your stake pool, one of the very first ones on the um, Insensitized testnet and then moved over to mainnet. What, what's the pool's name? Uh, it's called ADAVN, ADAVN. So the, the, the ticker is ADAVN. Uh, me and one of, one of my friends, we, I think we built the very first one in Vietnam. Um, yeah, and we were one of the first one who keep it running and bring it to the mainnet. And we still run it for now. Very, very cool. It's always uh, nice to see a uh, representation from Vietnam. I'm just pulling up the uh, the state pool. So, uh, you know, I'm interested in state pools. I run one myself. Yeah. And I can see, yeah, you definitely started there at um, Epoch 210. And it uh, looks like it's doing quite well as well. So it's, uh, it's uh, a, a decent amount of stake that you had um, over that time, I think, from what I can see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, right. probably uh, produced a lot of blocks over that time. <laughs> Over a thousand sure. blocks. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think we, we just got that badge from uh, uh, Kutu like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It's, it's kind of nice getting those little badges uh, come through. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's little, little goals, uh, especially when you're um, running uh, stake pools. Yeah. So in terms of getting back into the Cardano ecosystem, you've now started Carter Hub. And okay. I'm assuming this is uh, out of passion. Like why, what, okay, let, let's start back. What is Carter Hub and why did you start it? Okay. So the vision of Carter Hub is to be a hub of services running around the Cardano blockchain. So we aim to provide the users a wide range of services on any type and, and our user could be any type who are interested in Cardano. So our user could be a content creator who want to digitalize and bring their assets onto the blockchain in the form of, let's say, an NFT. Or they could be some digital assets collector who want to buy and sell their assets. Or our user could also be a team who have a collection of NFTs and they want to distribute those NFT to their users in a very decentralized manner. And the reason we started this one is that uh, when Cardano announced about their smart contract, their testnet, uh, and we have seen that uh, people are doing their, their own DApp, decentralized app application there. But we think that many teams, they didn't do it right. So they try to have some kind of a centralized application in a decentralized network and we think it's, 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 it doesn't sound okay, it's, it doesn't sound right. So, you know, like recently there are quite a few of what they call NFT drops in in Cardano uh, market and do you know how the other team are doing that out there? So the users are given some address, just an address to some private wallet and the user they don't have control over those wallet and they have to trust the team and to send the, the to send their ADA, their coin, the token into that wallet and hopefully the team will return the NFT back to, to the users. And to me it's a big no because 
I I don't know we why do we need to trust in in this kind of environment where you can totally trust into the system you you don't need to trust people that's why we started this service and we aim to provide uh, decentralized services that the user can just trust themselves and trust the system they don't need to trust us as the operator of the system that's the idea Gotcha. Okay. So I haven't had a play around with Carter Hub and seen how to create an NFT yet. But uh, yeah. let, let me just uh, a, explain to the audience how it's working at the moment. So a lot of the platforms are out there. You would, uh, when, when you start minting an NFT, the, the, like you described, there's an address. You push uh, or send your ADA to that particular address. That um, address would see that the ADA has come in. It will mint the NFT and then return it um, to the that uh, sending address. So it goes back to where the ADA came from. So you're saying your service is completely different to that. So how do, how does that workflow work then? How, how because like everyone that's in the NFT space, the C NFT space at the moment, is very used to that experience, and I think that's mainly because smart contracts weren't available. Right. So so what's the user experience like with Carter Hub? Okay, sure. So minting NFT was released as the very first service of Cardahub. Uh, and to the best of our knowledge, Cardahub minting service was the very first of its kind that offered that kind of service that we introduced to the Cardano in our community. It is contract based, it support wallet connector to let the user to sign the minting transaction by themselves. So the user will interact with the smart contract, right. have a transaction and sign the transaction themselves and send the transaction directly to the network. And with the support of the smart contract, we were able to enforce some of our rules into the minting process to pro mainly protect the content creator. For example, one of the rules is that you cannot mint the same image twice for two NFT. So that after you upload your image, anyone else could not upload that image again to create another NFT on our platform for sure. Wow. And okay. So it's it, how cool it, it, it does. And you know, image rec recognition. Yeah. 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 Some something like that. We have a mechanism to detect the similarity of the image. Wow. Okay. That is very very cool. So in, instead of uh, interacting with um, uh, a wallet address and it's being minted that way, you're interacting directly with the smart contract itself, doing uh, um, the minting policy that way and bypassing essentially a step. Um, so it creates a little bit of efficiency um, there as well. That is really cool. Um, what I have to ask for a lot of content creators, uh, have you implemented royalties into that minting process? Yeah, we have also have the royalty support in our plan, but it's actually is under development as we're speaking. Uh, we have a team is running on that. We will let content creator to define the royalty model and put it into the metadata of the NFT. But at the moment, uh, there is an improvement proposal for Cardano number 27, as I remember it correctly. Uh, it is uh, the proposal that uh, this royalty information could be put into an NFT and that could be enforced and adopted by the community so that every other marketplace or other products running on Cardano, they don't really need to implement it, but they just need to follow the, the, um, the proposal, the, the format of the NFT, the, uh, of the royalty metadata. Um, but I, but the, the, the 27th improvement proposal plan is still under the draft state. So I do expect it will take some time to, for the proposal to be approved by the community and to be adopted by the ecosystem. Until that, we are planning to just include that royalty in our marketplace contract. So it means that whenever the NFT is being traded on our platform, then the content creator can get, can get royalty. But in the long term, um, when the proposal, the improvement proposal is approved, then they can get the royalty on any marketplace. 
that's the idea. Okay, very cool. I know a lot of um, the content creators are well, waiting for that. It's one of the more desirable things. So you can launch your project and uh, obtain some more ADA over time as uh, the popularity of a project grows and improves. I think that's that might be one reason why the NFT space hasn't uh, grown as much as some of the other ones because we aren't seeing those royalties uh, come into play just yet. But uh, fingers crossed we do. So how does a large NFT drop project work then on your platform? So I can understand that the, the user is signing the um, transaction and, and uh, when they're creating an NFT, um, one image at a time uh, when they're uploading to a platform. What happens if they're trying to do a 10,000 image collection drop? Um, how does right. that process work? Because um, I, I, I play with uh, NFT Maker Pro and in that process, you upload all of your uh, NFT collection on there and then people can mint off that. So that's working off um, how people are familiar with it now, sending um, ADA to a particular address. How does that differ on Kata Hub? Okay, so on Kata Hub, that is the third service that we roll out uh, in the first batch of services for Kata Hub and we call it the NFT distribution service. Um, it's not for only for the artists, but it's for anyone who want to distribute their NFT to the users. Uh, we have been working with some artists who want to sell their artwork, like from a dozen to a hundred. Uh, or they can, or we also talk to one team who want to distribute the characters for the, for their NFT game. So why do they choose us? Because we do it right. Uh, on Cutterhub, the author or the artist or the game who want to distribute, they can choose how they want to distribute their NFT. So they can have a profile page where they list all of their NFTs or their artwork like photos, video, and the user can choose those artwork. And when they decide to, to buy it, they will start the minting process of that artwork. So it's basically, it essentially means that the user will be the one who mint that NFT from that, uh, from that author. And then the user will have virtually a very clear picture of what they are going to buy and what they will receive after, after the transaction. And if the team or the, or the author, they have too many NFT to drop, let's say a hundred thousand, for example, and they want to do, do it on our platform, they can choose a random distribution mechanism. It could be based on some uniqueness of some NFT, maybe some is more rare than the other. Those rules can be defined and they can work with, with that on, on defining those rules. And then the user will still minting the new NFT. And when they mint the NFT, they will be given a random NFT from our system. But the whole minting process is being triggered by the users, not by our system. Um, yeah, so the user, they, they have the full control of the, the minting. Uh, and they, they can see that their money is going out and the NFT is going in into their wallet. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that is very, very different to how things uh, work and operate at the moment. So um, I am assuming that the website connects to a particular wallet and I'm just clicking on it now and it looks like it integrates directly in with NAMI wallet at the moment, uh, which is yeah, probably, the only, yeah, it's, uh, probably the only wallet that um, is integratable at the moment. Um, so any Web3 wallet, I'm assuming it's going to integrate with uh, the U new Uroi DAP connector as well. Yes. So bef uh, beside NAMI, which is supported since day one, we also have some attempt to integrate Yoro into our, 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 our system. And we were successfully integrated the, ver the development version of Yoro uh, into Kadahub. And we were able to make the first minting trans uh, transaction using Yoro wallet connector. But uh, we should expect that that wallet connector from Yoro is still under heavy development. It's not ready for pu public use. That's why they, they don't pu publish it. And we just use it as um, 
in the developer perspective. So in order to use it, you, you need to have some technical skill where you need to go to the Yoroi repository, check out the branch that they have that support, build the wallet yourself and install it to, to, to Chrome and, and test it yourself. Yeah, but to me, I think recently the, the MUO team, the team that behind the Yoroi wallet has put in a lot of effort on their old wallet connector. So we do expect they would release it soon. And as soon as Yoroi or any other wallet that support that protocol, we that they can use it on kindahub.io. So I'm um, just out of interest. When do you think Yoroi will launch their new wallet? Uh, you know, in our team, we have a recurrent task to check out the the repository of every dependency that we are using, like your wallet connector, the NAMI wallet, or any repository from Cardano. And recently, just a couple of days ago, we see that the team has been putting a lot of effort on, on that wallet connector. So we think it could be very soon. I, I, I cannot tell the day, but very soon. Okay. I think everyone's waiting for this uh, particular one, so it's a, uh, right. it's uh, quite quite exciting to, to, yeah. <laughs> to see. I, that uh, yeah, we we have been talking to some customers, some some user. They they they, they was telling me that they had to because they use Yoroi, they don't use Nami, so they had to install Nami, send coin to Nam from Yoroi to Nami just to use our system. And after minting the NFT, they have to send everything out back to Yaron. And that is very inconvenient for the user. Yes. Yeah, yes, but it is. at the moment, Nami is the, the only one that's fully supported on, on this matter. So can't uh, a user restore a wallet on Nami? I haven't tried. So if they have a Yoroi wallet, can they restore on, on Nami? Yeah, technically, yes. As, as long as you, you keep your 24 keys or 15 key, 15 works key, then you are able to restart. Okay. Yes, it's, it's possible. Now with uh, a lot of these other platforms that allow for uh, launch pad services or uh, large minting services, they sometimes have APIs so that uh, a third party website can uh, link to it. So imagine um, I'm an artist, I have my own website, I want to promote my NFTs through my own website because it has a lot of other things on there too, like physical art or whatever it is. Is there an API available for Carter Hub so I can talk to it to possibly mint NFTs as well? Or does it have to always go through the platform and through the wallet connectors to interact with the smart contracts? Yeah, that's a very, very, very good question. So because to interact with the smart contract using the wallet connector like NAMI or Yoroi, you need to have some client code that is the code running on your browser, which if you have your own website, you have to have that code. But it could be possible if we can provide some widget that you can embed into your, your, your website. That would be easier than calling an, 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 an API. Uh, we, we have our own API for just for the front name, the, the website, kathub.io website to connect to our backend. We can open it, but you still have, if you don't have that kind of widget, you still have to implement your own interaction code to, to, to the blockchain. So it could be, I think that could be much better idea if we can provide such a widget or uh, a button that when you click on that uh, it runs our code to generate the transaction on your definition on your rules okay and that would be yeah easier okay it is a requested feature so um if okay. it's not on your yeah, roadmap, very, yeah. very 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 interesting and yeah yeah i i have no idea for my backlog <laughs> <laughs> please add it because it, it's a big thing so like you you follow an artist's twitter profile or linkedin profile mm -hmm. they usually have one website so it's back to their website it's their main point of contact where they show everything that they have and you know to add in another one so oh please go to my um you know carter hub io slash user slash username whatever it just makes it a little bit harder for um a, a buyer to jump through and then they have to look at the carter hub website and understand it and go through it but if you can create that minting process through the artist's own website, you've, you've got that extra engagement for the artist and for the purchaser, the yeah. collector. 
um, but it's still going through your platform. So I'm, I'm guessing there's still royalties uh, for yourself um, if you're uh, embedding a widget. So that's that's a, a new feature for your roadmap. Add it to your platform, sure. like you said. <laughs> it sounds interesting to me already. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about the minting process directly through the smart contracts. Customers, users are interacting directly to the website. Very cool. Talked about the launch pad as well. So artists can launch or creators can launch a lot of NFTs. You can buy it directly through the website and potentially through their own website in the future. So that sounds really cool too. Now the marketplace itself. So when we're look going to the Carter Hub, we're going to see a lot of a lot of uh, other uh, people trying to sell NFTs on there. And um, you, you may want to list NFTs on there. What is this experience like? What, 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 how is it going to work on the Carter Hub? Yeah, so the marketplace is one service that we want to roll around in this, this phase. And it's a under development. We almost finished with that and we are in the final stage of testing. So with this, this is just a very simple marketplace where the user can take any NFT in their own wallet. So they can mean that NFT from any other site, or they can even bought it from any other marketplace and they can just put it on to our store and where the other user could access, take a look and decide if they want to buy it, to buy it and they can just do it directly from their wallet. So they initialize uh, buying transaction, signing the transaction and receive the wallet. And after that, uh, we will roll out the auction feature for sure, where the user can put some price and let the other user to bid for the for, for the bid price. Uh, so the, those are just very basic personalities that a marketplace uh, need to have. But in our plan with Cutter Hub, the seller could do more than that. And at the moment, we are calling that feature dual listing. So what does it mean to all this thing? Mm. It means that design a user can list their assets, their NFT on the marketplace of Cutter Hub. They can also list that particular item onto another market at the same time. It means that the user will have a double chance to sell the item by reaching the, the buyers from both two markets. So yeah, I, we, we think it's really cool feature that we will provide the users and that future will come together with the marketplace when we introduce it. Okay, I've got two questions out of this. So the first one, uh, how on earth would the smart contract interact on another marketplace? Do you have to, I'm assuming you have to collaborate with this, uh, with the uh, other marketplace to be able to do this and enable it on there? The good thing is that we don't need to collaborate with the other marketplace. So when a user they list an NFT on our marketplace, we will give them a representing token, which essentially means the key to unlock their their original NFT on our marketplace. So that uh, that representing token they can have, they can be treated as a normal NFT, and that representing token could be listed on any other marketplace and whoever owned that token could come to the card hub to either unlock the token that is listing or get the money of the token if the token has been sold so it's yeah that's ah, the very, very first idea that is a very interesting idea so it's kind of like a aesthetic uh synthetic a a mirror copy of a particular token yeah. I mean, that that's an interesting one. So, um, like you you mentioned that last scenario there. So, if I have that uh, copy and I bought it mm -hmm. off another marketplace, and um, I can visually see it, is it a visual JPEG representation? You, as well? Yes, you yep. will see you will see the same. But of course, with some watermark or some something that represent that the original token is on Cutter Hub, and this is gotcha. not the original. Yep, yeah. Okay. So the buyer Excellent. should be aware of that because uh, it they, they may got confused. They may got they they may think that they are buying the original token, which yep. is not. Yeah. So we need to make sure of that. Yeah, but it's a replica that you can then trade in on Carter Hub. So yes, what happens if I'm a buyer? 
I'm just playing mm-hmm. this as an area. I'm a buyer. I see this one. So, oh, wow, that's that's amazing. I actually want that particular one. I go to Carter Hub. I buy it on the other marketplace. I go to Carter Hub to trade it in, but then I find out it's already sold. So okay. what, what happens there? Uh, we will try to minimize the, the confusion here. So when you see it, when you see the the clone on the other marketplace, you will see that if that token is still on sale or is already be sold, so you can decide if you want to buy it. So we will, uh, you will have the, you will expect what what you will receive, will receive when you trade in the, the the clone token. We can do that by updating the representative the represent image of of that token. So if the original token is sold on our marketplace, uh, then the, the image or the representative token will change somehow in their status. And you as the buyer could see it or could verify it before you buy it. Interesting. So uh, I'm, I'm just trying to work out how you can update the NFT. Uh, to, uh, it's you know nfts is yeah. unique it's non-fungible it's um you know it, it's traits it's metadata is locked into the blockchain so i'm just trying to think how, how or visualize how is that going to be updated uh, across um you know an nft from somewhere else yeah of course it's it's, it's uh, actually it's not that difficult uh, of course the uh, the data of the nft is um immutable it's, it cannot be changed anything of the data that has been written onto the blockchain, it will not be changed. That's for sure. But uh, an NFT on the blockchain is just a reference to an actual digital access. It could be on the IPFS, it could be an image on IPFS, it could be a video, or it could be anything. Uh, for the cloning token, we will host the image of that cloning token on our system. So whenever we want to change, we update it in our system. So the, the, the cloning NFT, it just point to that, that particular access on our system and it got updated easily. Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. So if the NFT is referencing an address that you control, then that makes perfect sense. I, if it was an right. IPFS that has been um, pinned yeah, already it, on you know, the interplanetary, sure. yeah, that, that, that wouldn't work, okay. All right, understood. Very, very cool. So, um, so I want to backtrack a little bit now. So, it, back to the beginning of the marketplace stuff. So, if mm-hmm. I, uh, some of the other marketplaces, they force you to transfer your NFTs to a wallet that is controlled by the marketplace. That's now, true. understanding your ideals around decentralization and non-custodial you know having to do everything through nami wallet and connecting through smart contracts um i, I want to get some clarity on how the uh, selling process works so if i was to sell an nft on carter hub do i have to transfer my nft to the platform or is it directly from my wallet to a smart contract what's what's the process okay so the process is that if you want to to send your you you want in in our platform we call it a listing action you want to list your nft onto our store then for sure you need to send your nft from your wallet to the contract of our marketplace it doesn't go through any any part of our system it goes directly from your from your wallet to the contract and you will see that transaction easily by nami because it it shows clearly on like how many token that you are, how many ADA you, that you are paying, what uh, NFT is leaving your wallet and to which address it will go, come into. And you will see that the address that the token is going to is the contract address. It's not any component that on our system. Gotcha. Okay. Very, yeah. very cool. I'm liking this platform more and more. It's, it's, it, it really does sound like it's built the right way. It's built the way that it should be with, you know, um, uh, yeah. ideals alter smart contracts. Okay. Very, very cool. So, uh, let's have a look and dive into the team. Like who's, who's behind it. Who's 
who you got on board, uh, obviously yourself, very experienced in the blockchain space with um, a lot of uh, your, your PhD in distributed systems and uh, your experience with the S node and uh, you know the, your your experience in uh, Cardano in general. Who else is working on the project? Uh, what what's their experience like? Um, and uh, how long have they been with the team? Okay, um, I'm I'm glad that you ask. Uh, I think I am lucky enough to have the chance to work with very talented people. Everyone in in the team has very strong background on on their field, and as you see, the core team more than half of our core team have PhD in computer science, informatics, and related fields like uh, Zhang, uh, the contract, uh, the, the one who's working on contract, they, he has his master in Korea and his PhD in Sweden. Uh, Luan also has a master in Korea and did her PhD in Switzerland. And Shanghai got his master and this did also did his PhD in France and currently working for KPMG in Germany. And everyone else who are a very talented engineer with more than 10 years of experience and who is currently playing the role of senior architect for the product. And last but not least, we are lucky enough to have uh, Ku on board as our community manager. Ku has been very well known in Vietnamese Cardano communities for his dedicated effort on growing and helping the community. And as you see that, even though we spread on over the world, everyone in our team has known each other for years. And we have been working together for many projects. And actually, most of the team here were with me in the last Snow project that I mentioned above. So together, we built a very uh, relatively successful project. And now we are together again and building the next big thing. Very, very cool. It's good to build up that relationship and yeah. work with people that uh, you know and um, you can work well with. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it's good to see that team. It's uh, as, as, as especially an impressive uh, resume <laughs> across the entire team with uh, PhDs in in uh, computer science, information technology, etc. Across uh, across almost everyone on the team there. So that's very cool to see. And of course, you have mm -hmm. a Cardano ambassador on your side as well to. Um, help connect and that's how we connected oh, through sure. as well so i'm um, cool uh connected through uh the kandana ambassador program and, in, and uh, gave me the introduction so thank you uh it's been really cool in terms of the actual business model um obviously we i, I have a rough idea of how you're going to keep this going and grow it but what's the business model of carter hub like how is carter hub actually making money yeah Sure. As, as you see that we are providing services. So we charge service fee for, for example, for minting. Actually, for minting, we have a free minting mode and a premium minting. With free minting, the user can still have all the benefit that pre, uh, premium user have. But uh, we will put one field in that metadata, uh, in the metadata of the minted token saying that that token is minted by cardhub.io and we think that is, is fair and that helps us to um, to get more exposure to, to, to the community, uh, to other market, marketplace. Um, so either premium minting or free minting uh, that the user could choose, we still have some benefit from that. Uh, for the marketplace, we charge the seller for a fee when their items got sold. And for the NFT distribution, we will talk to the creator, the author, and we work with them on the pricing model. It depends on how many tokens they want to distribute, how complex their distribution rules are. Uh, so we can have a, a pricing model on that for, um, it, it will be different for, from team to team for the, for the distribution service. But the idea is that we will charge some fee for the, the service that the user use okay 
So um, is there any way that we can find out? Uh, is there like a price list or something? I, I know your marketplace isn't um, available yet, but um, is, is there like a clear um, of how much um, they'll be paying for all these? Yeah, people? so uh, currently we, we haven't had it on our interface yet, but for the minting, you can see if you choose a premium minting, you will, uh, a user will need to pay one ADA as a service fee. And they can put whatever metadata that that they want into the FT, and they can get rid of the the minted the embedded field that we put in. For the marketplace, we plan to charge around two percent of the price of, of of the selling price of the NFT. And for the distribution, we charge a minimum of three ADA per uh, NFT distributed, uh, and it, it could vary from three or a little bit more than that, depends on the distribution rules. Okay, very cool. It's, that's, to me, sounds all quite affordable. One, one ADA for um, a premium mint and a 2% yeah. seems uh, quite fair for, um, in comparison to other marketplaces um, like uh, OpenSea or Rarible. Um, so it's uh, on par with uh, what we see in other ecosystems. Now, in regards to other ecosystems, how, how come Cardano? Why, why did you settle on Cardano? I know you started the stake pool and you're very interested in uh, Cardano back um, back in uh, 2017, but you could have, you, you've got this amazing team and you could have uh, spun something up on Sol or Polkadot or uh, another marketplace on Ethereum. Why did you settle for Cardano? Yeah, uh, it's a very interesting question, I would say. Uh, it to me it's just a personal preference. Uh, for me, I have my personal reason to choose Cardano over the other blockchains, because in my opinion, after digging into Cardano for quite some time, looking into their code, looking into their development, I think that Cardano is kind of a green field for both users and the D app developers because the chains are kind of fair for everyone. Even if you start now, you are not too far behind. And also the community of Cardano is incredible, I would say. Uh, at least the community that I have known, they, they know what the platform does, they, they have clear expectation, they know the timeline, uh, everyone is helping each other. And for all the blockchains like the EVM solidity based solidity contract based blockchain like Ethereum or Binance chains, in my opinion, the, the market is much more competitive. And uh, uh, especially, I think uh, it's more toxic to the users. Why I say that? Uh, cloning an app on Ethereum is quite simple. Even my master's student could clone the Uniswap app in just a couple of days in, in their uh, weekly assignment. And with an experienced developer, it's just a matter of hours. And I think that is not good for the ecosystem because they just clone the app without wearing off the bugs or any witnesses of the app. And yeah, the result of that one is every day on the new, we can see there, there's an attack on this blockchain, on that blockchain, on this app, and all the attacks, they have the same mechanism. Why it, it just happened with the same mechanism, but to, but to different apps, and it doesn't stop, it just keep continue. So I don't think at the moment you can do the same with Cardano because at least at this stage, every team on every developer have to put a huge amount of effort into developing an app for Cardano because it's, it's not easy at all, I would say. And that's a, something that is healthy for the system. And yeah, again, this is just my personal opinion. Don't take it as advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I kind of agree with that. It's, um, it's yeah. a very, uh, very good take on it all. Now, I'm, in talking about smart contracts as well, I want to back up a little bit. And um, there's, there's always this talk about concurrency and how how Cardano can scale because you can only consume one one um, uh, smart contract per uh, block. So in terms of how you're scaling your uh, Cardano hub, how are you going to be able to uh, support like really 
big, large um, Cardano drops where thousands of people are wanting to mint a particular project uh, within a very small, short period of time. How, how do you scale up for something like that? Okay. Uh, yeah, so concurrency problem has been uh, around the community for, uh, for a while, especially after the testnet. And I would say the concurrency problem that people was facing in the testnet, it was, it were kind of expected. So it's like the nature of the blockchain, the UTXO model. So it's the job of the developer to recognize the problem and to work their way out of the problem. It's not the problem of the, the, the blockchain because UTXO is a very strong model. Uh, it just you cannot use the same UTXO for multiple transactions in the same block. Uh, just don't put yourself into that situation. So for the minting on Cardano uh, on Cardano Hub, um, we don't reuse any UTXO. We don't have like a single UTXO that pass between the users, um, and the user had to have that UTXO in order to mint the NFT. So each user they come with their own fund their own UTXO and those UTXO they don't depend on each other so all the transactions could be just executed concurrently without any problem on, on Kada Hub and also that would is that would be the same for the marketplace so on the marketplace we don't put any NFT on the same UTXO to run into that, that concurrency problem so every item everything on Kada Hub is on different UTXO and those, whenever the user want to buy something, those few tastes all could be consumed concurrently and they don't depend on each other. So we don't really have that kind of problem. Understood. So unique UTXO so they um, uh, can, can pass through and, and scale that way. Yeah. All right, completely understood. So that's how it works. Learn something new every day. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so we've learned quite a lot about the Carter Hub platform, a lot about the team and yourself as well. So the very last thing, how can people find out more about Carter Hub? We can get to it at carterhub.io. Where else should people check it out? Do you have an online community or anything? Where Where is all the action happening? Yeah, so for sure we have our Twitter channel, we have our Discord channel and a Telegram channel. And we will try to post and publish every news or every uh, development progress of the team on, on those public channel. And we have some community channel where the user can post their question and discuss something about, about the project. So we are actively um, communicate with, with user mostly on Discord and Telegram. Those are the main two channels. And uh, I can send you the link after this one to, to those. I've just joined Carter Hub on Discord. So I will check yeah. it out and see what other people are doing there. It's, so it's, yeah, I know it's, it's been quiet. But yeah, those are our channels. Okay. Well, it's still a very fresh new project and it hasn't been really, uh, I haven't seen people pushing it out there yet. But having this um, explanation and understanding of exactly how things work on Carter Hub has been enlightening. And I think people will be very interested in checking it out, at least to uh, give it a go and see how it all works and be, get a better understanding of it. So I'll talk to my other uh, NFT um, collaborators and see what they think about this and uh, have a little play around with it. No, but it is looking very good. Uh, Long, thank you. Congratulations on the project and congratulations on building something on Cardano as well. It's uh, awesome to see. For sure, thank you very much. Now, I really hope you enjoyed that interview and have a really good understanding of how things will work on the Carter Hub and how you can potentially mint and launch your big NFT projects trade sell on the marketplace as well so it's going to be quite a all-in-one hub hence the carter hub name for all your nft needs and i'm really liking their approach as well where it's all done by smart contracts 
they don't hold on to anything they just take a small fee in the transactions or depending on how you interact with the website so that's really cool i love the approach it's quite a smart way it's very decentralized the whole blockchain ethos is all in there check out the links down below they're all there to their discord it's just starting uh, check out their um, Twitter page as well as uh, and of course the website um, and if you haven't yet check out the tutorial in the top right hand corner there I'll put another link there so you can get to it and learn how to use this platform so until next time yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.